Barry, um, over to you for your presentation. Thank you. All right. Thanks so much. So we are going to talk today about item preview in English for academic purposes, listening assessment. All right, so we'll get started with some definitions for this topic. Zach and I did a study related to question preview. Question preview is essentially when students take a listening exam and they have access to the questions before they listen. This is also referred to as a while listening test in some research, and it's contrasted typically against the no preview condition, which is also called a post listening test. Um, there are several different types of question preview. Uh, the most common type is question preview or sometimes referred to as full preview where students may see both the question stem or question itself and the multiple choice options before they listen. Another type is item preview or stem preview where students may see the question stem but not the options. Um, and there are other options as well. Option preview is where students can see the multiple choice options, but not the question. And uh, Sherman 1997 explored the sandwich model where students listened to the lecture twice and saw the stem and options between the listenings. Previous research on item preview has focused mostly on the question of item facility, that is the ease or difficulty of the items. And um, most of the research that is presented on this page has found that question preview does tend to make an item easier than the no preview condition. So when students can see the question before they listen, they tend to uh, score higher on it. Several of these studies here have compared different types of question preview against themselves and have found that question preview and item preview tend to perform similarly. Um, option preview and the sandwich method seem to be a little bit different, but for our study we chose to focus on item preview, so we presented only the question to students before the lecture, and um, we'll tell you more about our methods in a bit. Um, I do want to focus your attention on three of these studies that are presented on this page towards the bottom. So Chang and Reid 2006, El Khafaiti 2005, and Byrne 1995 took a slightly different approach to researching item preview. They all approached it from the question of looking for pre-listening strategies to allow students some opportunity to become familiar with the context of the topic before they uh, started listening to the lecture. And Chang and Reid 2006 explored four different strategies. So they looked at providing a vocabulary gloss, question preview, giving the students the chance to listen twice, and giving the students background information through a reading. They found that the background information was the most helpful in terms of student scores. Listening twice was also very helpful. Question preview was less helpful, but it um, was more facilitative than vocabulary instruction. El Khafaiti 2005 and Byrne 1995 also compared question preview against providing a simple vocabulary gloss and both found that question preview had a greater effect on facility than a vocabulary gloss alone. Finally, the last study on this list is Wagner 2012. He was the only one that we have found who um, discovered that there was no difference in terms of facility between providing question preview and having the students listen to the lecture and see the questions after. Several benefits of question preview have been proposed. The most common one is face validity, so students feel that it helps them on the test and so they tend to prefer it in interviews and um, several studies have found this result. Kim 2015 discovered that um, item preview could reduce the effect of working memory. Um, Buck 2001 proposed that item preview might provide a purpose for listening in imitation of the type of tasks that students will do in the target language use environment. And Lee 2018 found that higher level listeners were better able to take advantage of item preview than lower level listeners, which led to improved discrimination. 
Several drawbacks of question preview have also been proposed. Um, Area News 2011 suggested that item preview could actually overload working memory or introduce construct irrelevant variants. And Koyama Sun and Aki 2016 and Yanagawa and Green 2018 joined with Eriodust in suggesting that item preview might actually tend to alter the listening construct so that when students are able to see the questions before the lecture, they tend to approach the text differently, doing a kind of like aural scanning where they're looking for uh, word level recognition rather than higher level meaning mapping. And Yanagawa and Green in their study found that item preview reduced discrimination because it was more beneficial to the lower level learners than the higher level learners. Um, we did not discover any research which explored the effect of item preview on different types of items such as global, global or main idea questions versus local or detail questions. And we believe that if research on this area is done, this could help us potentially to answer the question of whether preview alters the nature of the listening construct. We were able to find uh, previous research on item types, but not particularly in connection with item preview. Hildyard and Olson in 1982 did a study of different item types in an L1 context and found that more successful L1 learners focused on global understanding while less successful learners focused on details. Shohemi and Inbar in 1991 did a study in an L2 context where they compared local, global, and trivial items on a test that had item preview. They found that the local items were the easiest and the trivial items were kind of a wild card. One of their trivial items was the hardest question on their test and one was the easiest. They also found that higher level test takers did better on the global items compared to the lower level learners. Although they did not measure discrimination um, directly, they hypothesized that um, this would lead to improved discrimination. Sai and Fully Love found similar results to Shohemi and Inbar. Um, Park 2019 had a slight difference in her study. She was comparing the language of notes. She had students taking notes in English and in Korean. And although she found no difference in comprehension based on the language of notes, she did find that one of her measures of quality of notes correlated with comprehension of global items, but not local ones. Our study comes out of our experience as practitioners, both Zach and I are language educators. And in 2018, we were tasked with updating a university in-house entrance exam for the university we both worked at. This exam was medium stakes and based on the scores from this exam, students would either be placed into rhetoric classes with no ESL support, into four credit listening classes, or into not for credit transitions listening classes. The original test just included a vocabulary gloss and a place to take notes. We updated the test, um, the criteria for our vocabulary gloss, provided a space to take notes, and also explicit instruction to focus on the main ideas of the lecture. But we also toyed with the idea of adding item preview to kind of foster a sense of context for the lecture. So we looked into the assessment literature to see what we could find on this topic and found that the results were inconclusive. Listening in general, as many of you know, is an under-researched topic. Zhang 2020 published a bibliometric analysis of articles that are published in the top journals in our field in applied linguistics over the past 20 years and found over 800 articles that focused on reading but only about 200 that focused on listening. So listening is kind of an overlooked area of language assessment. In the absence of guidance from the literature, we looked at standardized exams to see whether they offered item preview or not, and we found a mixture. So IELTS and several other standardized exams do include item preview or question preview. TOEFL does not, and some standardized exams contain a mixture of both. The textbooks that we had access to in our department also contained a mixture of 
preview and no preview. And in our local curriculum, we're required to include two listening tasks on each exam, one with preview and one without. So all of this left us um, unsure whether we should include this on our exam or not which led to the design of our study. So we investigated two research questions. First, does the presence of item preview affect facility measures? That is, does it make items more difficult or less difficult? And secondly, does the presence of item preview differentially affect item types? Um, does preview make global items more difficult than local items or vice versa? In order to investigate these questions, we developed two lectures according to the specifications for our exam, and we administered them in eight classes. Seven were four credit ESL listening classes, and one was a non-credit bearing transitions course. Both lectures were administered two times, once with preview and once without, and each class had the opportunity to hear each lecture and had the opportunity to experience item preview and uh, once without item preview. All students were then given the opportunity to participate in the research by checking a box on an information sheet and their work was collected anonymously, scanned, and then returned to classroom instructors. We developed two lectures in accordance with the specifications for our in-house placement exam, and we'd be happy to return to these specifications and discuss them more with you later, but I'll skim through these quickly. Essentially, both lectures were semi-scripted, about 10 minutes long. They were informative freshman level topics, and they were about 150 words a minute. We also developed nine multiple choice questions for each lecture, Eight multiple choice questions aligned with the specifications for our placement exam. Uh, that included four global items, so one targeting the main idea of the lecture, two targeting the main idea of a subpoint, and one targeting an inference, and then four local items, so three items targeting support, one art, and one item targeting a definition. We also developed one additional multiple choice item for each lecture that was targeting a trivial detail based on Shohamian Inbar 1991. And we piloted all of these items extensively. Our data was collected from students who were enrolled in the intact ESL credit listening or ESL transitions listening classes. All students had an IELTS score above 6.5 with no subscore below 6 or a TOEFL score above 80 with no subscore below 17, and no student had a TOEFL score above 100. Although we collected the data anonymously and were unable to collect demographic data for each individual participant, we were able to obtain registrar records for the fall of 2019, and from those we can determine that the three top nationalities that were represented among our student population were um, Chinese, Indian and South Korean, and approximately half of the students were male and half identified as female. We administered Lecture A during week two of classes in fall 2019, and Lecture B was administered during week three. Um, across these eight classes, 102 students heard Lecture A and 59 chose to participate in the study. Two of the four classes in ESL Group 1 had some technical issues during the administration of Lecture A, which we were unable to control for, and so we chose to discard the data from those two classes. That left us with 44 usable samples uh, from Group 1 for Lecture A. And then uh, 103 students had the opportunity to hear Lecture B, and 54 chose to participate in the study. I'll discuss how we analyze the data. Um, just as a reminder, we wanted to answer two main questions. The first was, does item preview affect the difficulty um, either of an item, a single item, or the entire test overall? And then, does item preview affect the difficulty of different item types in a different way? So to do this, we used uh, generalized linear mixed effects models using the LME4 package in R in our studio. Um, these are a type of linear model that have three main parts. So the first part is a link function, 
And the purpose of the link function is to make the response variable fit certain distributional assumptions. Um, the probability of getting one particular item correct is a binomial distribution. It varies from zero to one. Uh, the total score on the exam is a count, so it's a Poisson distribution. There are also fixed effects, which are variables of interest. And then there are random effects, which are variables uh, that we don't expect to be able to measure again in the same way in the future, but we do want to uh, control for any variation between the levels. So we uh, created various models with different um, fixed effects and random effects in them, compared those models using AIC and BIC and significance tests. When we found uh, the best performing model, then we looked at contrasts within that model to determine whether or not there were differences in the fixed effects in terms of the response. So what we found uh, was that for a single item, the best predictor of the probability that a student would get that item right was a model that had condition, either item preview or no item preview, as a fixed effect item type as another fixed effect, and then a random effect of class. So this basically meant that students in the item preview condition had a 44% higher odds of getting an item correct than students in the no item preview condition. Local items had a 142% higher odds of a correct response than global items. They also had a 109% higher odds of a correct response than trivial items. Uh, however, global items and local items did not seem to perform very differently from each other. Uh, there was no formal interaction in the model between item preview and item type. However, item preview may decrease differences in the difficulty of different item types, but it doesn't appear strong enough to make item types uh, that are um, similar in difficulty become different in difficulty. So here's a graph of the results. Uh, the two on the left are just with odds on the y-axis, odds of a correct response. The two graphs on the right are probability of a correct response on the y-axis. So they're the same thing. They're just a little bit different scales. As you can see, local items are easier and preview appears to make the items easier as well. We wanted to check to make sure uh, that different levels of our sections, there's this T section that we thought should have lower proficiency students. We wanted to make sure that they were not more likely than other sections, much more likely to get items correct. And that's what we found. We did see that section four may, be a little, may have been a little bit lower proficiency than we would have expected, um, but that's something we'll have to investigate further in the future. In terms of the total test score, the best performing model had condition as a fixed effect and class as a random effect. Um, you can see the confidence interval gets really close to zero in terms of um, the percentage higher score that item preview causes students to have. The means and the medians of uh, total scores in the preview condition and the no preview condition were very similar. So we were confused about why the model was showing condition as a significant main effect. Um, and then we made a histogram and the histogram I think contains the key. In the no item preview condition, it seems like a bimodal distribution. There's a large percentage of the students that are grouped around three uh, out of nine as the total score. And then a, a larger group around six. But when you add item preview, that lower level group seems to be pushed up and there's just a unimodal distribution. So just to review, item preview makes uh, facility, item facility increase, makes items and tests easier. Uh, it appears to make local items easier, sorry, uh, local items seem to be the easiest type of items. It's not clear whether those interact with item preview or not. So our findings are in agreement with previous studies that found item preview increases item facility. We're not sure what the results mean in terms of different proficiency levels. You saw those changes uh, when we added item preview for the total scores. Um, Let's see, I'm trying to hurry here. Um, 
Yeah, Re Rebecca, do you want to, um, is there anything we need to cover before the end? <laughs> Rebecca, you're still on Do we have two more minutes or do we have 12 more minutes? I'm no, a you can confused. have a couple of more minutes. Yeah, we, we, we are slightly <laughs> okay. over time, but if you want a couple okay. more minutes yeah. just to round off, that's that's okay. 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 Sounds good. Thanks. Yeah, Zach, you, I think you're doing a great job. You can keep okay, going thanks. with it. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, so, yes, uh, we also found support for previous studies that show that local items do seem to be easier than global items. Trivial items, uh, they just seem to pattern randomly, which is what we would expect. Um, they're not really based on any main idea or important thing from the, the lecture. Um, we still don't know whether or not the increase in student performance because of item preview is because it's providing them for a context for listening or if it's actually altering the listening construct and measuring something a little bit different. We wish we could have had more detailed demographic data on participants. I think that could have allowed us to answer um, some more and some different questions. And we did see that perhaps the design and number of our trivial items uh, may have affected the results a little bit. There was only one for each lecture and they seem to be actually closer connected to global items than we had, had wanted them to be. So more re research is needed on listening assessment, also more research on item type. Um, we're actually researching the relationship between item preview and discrimination, uh, but we didn't have time to talk about that today. Um, and we hope that researchers can continue to look at the effect of item preview on the actual listening construct itself. So if you're a teacher or a test user, keep in mind that item preview appears to decrease the difficulty of a listening test. You wanna bear that in mind when designing tests and you'll wanna make sure, perhaps this goes without saying, but I think this is confirmation of it. Uh, you probably wanna avoid trivial items. They don't seem to provide relevant information about students' listening ability. Thank you very much. Thank you. Rebecca and Zachary for that presentation of your research. Um, We've got some, a few minutes for some questions. If anybody would like to type a question into the chat box or whether they'd like to just come onto the video and uh, ask Rebecca and Zachary directly, that's fine. Zach, you, Zachary, you mentioned like mm -hmm. right at the end, you, you had a lack of um, demographic data. But I, when I was listening earlier, you mentioned that it was a, you, know, you were mentioning uh, you know numbers of Chinese, Indian, and South Korean students. What mm -hmm. what what kind of um, demographic data? Why didn't you 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 see you seem to have nationality details for some of the Kansas students? Yeah, yeah. go ahead, Rebecca. Yeah, I'll go back to that slide yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. We collected data anonymously from intact classes. And so we were not able to collect data on the individual students who participated okay, right. in our setting, mm. but we were able to report on the classes. Mm, okay, so we don't know which of those students contributed their work. Right, of course, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, <sorry. laughs> And it, it did facilitate our, our study, um, but it would have been really nice to know um, there's one particular thing we can't actually measure because we don't know if, um, you know, a single student took the exam twice or not, mm. did lecture A and lecture B. Um, so there are some inferences that we can't make about their ability mm. because of that. There's a question from Luke here. Um, he says, thanks, thanks to you both for the presentation. And he was wondering which format you think best matches what the students will need to do in the target language domain. Mm. Zachary, do you want to take this one? Yeah. Um, so I, I'm, I'm fairly convinced that um, students in the university will pretty rarely have to uh, listen to a lecture in one shot and then immediately take a multiple choice exam on that, mm -hmm. what they had listened to. Mm -hmm. um, in university classes, there's much more context. Students have 
hopefully been learning something the whole semester that they can connect new knowledge to. They've hopefully been reading their textbooks or other materials and getting more context for the lecture. They can ask questions. They can review notes that they've taken at, over several days, things like that. Um, so I, I think that item preview may be a way to kind of get approximate better that type of listening task um, than any other possible option for a large, you know, kind of medium stakes placement exam like this. Um, if you have ideas for other ways to, to more closely a, approximate the TLU, that would be wonderful. But yeah, um, yeah I might jump on to the end of that and say, um, drawing off of Chang and Reed's study that explored several different pre-listening activities, the background information strategy was actually the most facilitated for the students. And that is also probably the one that is most similar to the type of task that students will do in the target, target language use environment. So partially as a result of this study, our listening exam is now moving towards an integrated read, listen, write task. Uh, so we won't be using this multiple choice format in the future. Um, of course, that comes with its own challenges, um, especially regarding reliability and teasing out the separate effects of reading and listening and writing in, in an integrated task. But integrated tasks are the most authentic when it comes to comparing what students will do in their actual classrooms. Thanks, Rebecca and Zach. And thank you, Luke, for the question. Um, I don't see any other questions there. Um, and we did overrun a little bit on your presentation. So if there aren't any more questions, mm -hmm. I think we can leave, leave things there. All right, thanks so much. Thank you, Zachary, and thanks, Rebecca, for presenting that, and um, nice, nice to see you here. Yes, thank you for moderating us, and thank you for all your feedback. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks, take care. Yep. Thanks. Bye. You too, bye. Okay, we'll have a short break and then uh, we'll have our final um, presentation from Martina, who is here. Good to see you, Martina. You finally made it. Um, I'm glad to see you, that you resolved the technical problem. You're, you're, you're um, still on mute, actually, Martina. Oh, all right. Okay, no, good. Here. Good to see you finally made it. <laughs> It was quite a morning, it was quite a morning, but thank you because you all responded to me and uh, yeah. it was really Well, is, is, uh, the, um, Neil, who's the uh, project manager, he, he got in touch with me straight away. I found that he was on the New Directions um, chat group and he answered immediately and um, he just uh, asked for your email and uh, he sent you the new password straight away, so thanks yeah, to him. It was uh, perfect because I was I didn't know I was logging in quite well yesterday, mm. and uh, and today, you know, I just wanted to log in from the morning to see what's going on mm. and so on and so on. But it's good I did want to log in from the very morning in order to. <laughs> yeah, it's good excuse you if you just five minutes beforehand. It's it's a it's a problem when these sort of technical issues come around. I don't know what happened. It seems strange that the you, you like you say you managed to log on yesterday, what's and happening? today. You know what's you know, happening? And what is my what is my prediction? What happened was that I was logging in. And when I was logging in yesterday first, it was showing me the same message that it failed. And yeah. then if I would refresh the page, suddenly I would be logged in. Okay. Uh, so I think that might contribute to that, that for example, it was counting as failed logins. Okay. Although it was logging me in, in the end. Oh, uh, yeah. The information was logged and failed and the second information, well, suddenly I was logged in. So I said, okay, you know, let's just work with that. Let's just go. But today I think maybe I logged in one too many times and it counted as okay yeah over. Uh, yeah well the important thing is that you, you, we got everything sorted out and you're you're here now Matty, i just wanted to ask you before we start if you um do you want to try just sharing your powerpoint just to make sure that's okay um can you just give me a minute yeah yeah take this? your time yeah i just want to make sure that everything's okay it's okay we've we've got 10 minutes no worries <laughs> 